Good evening, everyone. My name is Janet Larson Meyer, and I'm an executive vice president at CTFO. Klaus Urbanek and I organized this meeting for all of us tonight to address the current business environment and temporary challenges we're experiencing right now in Canada. Our company co founder and chief operating officer, Michael Kahn, is here with us tonight because he and our ownership team are very concerned about what's going on that's impacting all of you and our company. Michael will be sharing some updates with all of us about what he's learned so far and what's being done to address the problems for our CTFO associates and customers in Canada. Michael, thank you for your time. I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Janet. And first of all, I wanna thank you and Klaus and your dedication not only to CTFO and your entire leadership um, the, the way in which you per perform as a leader, the way in which you put forth so much leadership qualities, but specifically how much you're, you're really taking it on as a personal passion to help everyone in Canada. So I just want you to know if you're in Canada, you're hearing and seeing me right now, you have a champion in Janet and in Klaus there. So thank you very much, Janet. Um, folks, it's no fun. And everyone that I've talked to in Canada has told me that the ones that I've personally talked to in Canada have said, it's our government. We know it's no fun, but it's our government. So that's them saying that, not me. I'm not saying it's your government. I'm just saying you guys say it's your government. This is not the first time we've been down this road with having the gray area go black or white or whatever and having problems with getting the, the products into Canada. I will say, I saw an amazing TV piece just today, actually last night and today, two different ones, uh, a TV news piece on CBD in Canada. And it really looks like there's a groundswell happening in Canada because the, the news reporting was very much about why is our government not letting these people get these products that are saving and changing lives to them. So it was really interesting to see that. But Back to us as CTFO, we are committed to doing everything possible, legally, morally, ethically, to getting our products across the border to those of you in Canada. We know that that has been difficult in the past. We've overcome it actually a couple of different times. We will do so again. We have a team of people not so much a specific team, but a number of different people all working interactively to make sure this happens. We have in-house personnel that are um, focused on this as well as external consultants. And we actually now have, through some of our in-house leaders and our external consultant, uh, a new significant partner, uh, what do you call them in relationships, in business relationships, uh, Anyway, there's a term for it, um, a specific significant business relationship established with somebody who owns a, the producer's license that Health Canada requires. Moreover, they've had the multiple licenses since 1997. They're actually grandfathered in with Health Canada. They have a long-term relationship with Health Canada. And so we have established and identified a clear path to move down toward getting everything above board, black and white, fully approved going through to Canada. Uh, the thing that was really interesting to us was once we heard that products were being held, and for a long time, products were being held in a hit and miss ratio. And the ratio was like 95% were getting through and 5% were. So we were kind of trying to work through the problems as a, as, a business, as a good business person. If you were one of those 95 percenters, you would want us to keep delivering to you. But we knew about 5% were being held at the border. Well, through a number of different scenarios, it changed to where basically almost all, not quite all because people are still getting them, but almost all the products started being held at the border. So we had a call into and then we talked to a uh, supervisor, and I believe it was, I'm not sure which um, province it was. One of the provinces, because they have different customs offices, 
very nice person, very apologetic that all they can do is follow Health Canada's rules, that they really don't want to hold these products up. They were actually separating out the non-CBD products so those could be delivered. But um, they were saying, all we need is direction from Health Canada to let these through and we'll do so. So really what we're working with now is this individual company that has the producer's licenses and, and a number of different licenses with Health Canada to find out the correct way, whatever Health Canada needs for complete authorizations for these products to get through, for the validation of the quality of the products, for the, whether it's the labeling, whether it's the, um, whatever it is they need. We, may, we are hoping we will actually be able to set it up to where the, the shipments will go continuously from, as they have been in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, from our fulfillment center in the States right to your door. We may have to box them all up, put them into packages with your name and address and labels on them, and then bulk ship those boxes to the Canadian company's center in Canada and then have them distribute them to you from there. That's an option. We're, this just came to pass. Monday was a holiday in Canada, as many of you know, the um, family day. This just came and last week, one or the other of our two, the two people that are really putting this together in Canada were not available. So this started yesterday. So I just want you to know you're hearing about this within 24 hours of when it's really coming together. Um, it looks very promising. I can't give you dates. I can't give you uh, specific, you know, um, uh, explanations of how it's going to work because that hasn't unveiled it, it hasn't unfolded yet. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> As you can imagine, I've been talking a lot today, so I keep my water by my desk here. Um, but I do know we feel more confident and more comfortable about this unfolding correctly for everyone in Canada in the very near future. I do want to say I've seen a couple of different response parameter perspectives or um, sort of polarized ways in which people are responding, not only to the Canadian situation, but to any of the challenges that we are currently facing, all of which are temporary, all of which are a natural part of any growing business. <clears throat> and I would simply say one of them is from the perspective of somebody who either has owned a business themselves before or is in the mindset to own a business themselves before. And the other is from somebody who has only and always thought about being an employee. Because if all you can do is think about why isn't this being right for me? I'm an employee, the employer is supposed to make it right, I'm supposed to put my hours in and get paid and nothing's ever supposed to go wrong. And if I work overtime, I work overtime. If I get sick, I get sick. But Everything's supposed to work because that's their job to make it work. That's an employee mentality. But if you've ever owned a company or a business or really treated a network marketing company like it was really your own business, you'll know that challenges, things beyond your control, and all kinds of less than optimal situations occur. And you work through them. So I just want to remind everybody, this is not a job. If you want a job, go get a job and let somebody else tell you what to do. <laughs> it, I'm, I have found that I'm actually psychologically unemployable. <laughs> I, I was told that one time because I, I don't really like someone else telling me what to do. But the reverse of that is they give you the security of theoretically setting up a platform for you to operate on but they also set the limitations you have to do what they say and you're only going to make what they tell you you're going to make and if they choose not to hire you anymore you're fired but if you're going to treat this as a business not just as a job then take on the mantle of knowing you don't actually have to solve all the problems that's what we're here for but you have to kind of allow for the fact that there will be problems that need solving. Um, we had problems with our previous backbone 
and a lot of people were complaining about them. And we went to this backbone and this transition phase has been problematic, but we're solving those problems and it's gonna be so much bigger and better. We had problems before with getting products into Canada. And there were people that handled it and people that didn't, and we solved them for those periods of time and we will do so again. I'm only saying this to help you choose how you want a response because Quite frankly, regardless of how you choose it, these are things out of your control. They're not out of my control because I'm orchestrating a lot of things here. But if I was simply and only an associate in our company, which I am as far as income, but not having to deal with orchestrating corporate activities, I would say I really believe why would they not have our best interest in heart? And if any of you are new on this call and you don't really know who we are, let me tell you, we have your best interest in heart. We really do. And it's one of the things that separates us from a whole lot of other companies because we're not just trying to take advantage of everyone out there to increase corporate profits because we make our money the same way you do. And quite frankly, when you see volumes go down, I see bigger volumes go down. When you see your paycheck go down, I see bigger paycheck go down. So i go down even more. So I just want to let you know, without being able to answer every detailed question, because it's a dynamic, fluid, ongoing process, we have your back. If you're in Canada, we have your back. It's going to take longer than any of us want, because none of us even want this to be where it is right now. But we got your back. And we're making this happen. And quite frankly, the explosion we have already seen there, we know the market potential, even just from a business standpoint. Even if we were only bottom line interested in just pulling corporate profits out of this thing, which is not the way the business model is set up, we would want Canada fully functioning because we've seen the potential there. So, um, let me see if I can, Janet has given me a few different things to. To, I kind of have diverted here in where I'm going, but I just want you to know we have a team working for you. We have had a history of tremendous challenges in Canada, and we've been told by Canadians that's not unusual. We have also really identified a pathway to work through those challenges. And that's really the good news I want to let you know is that it's been such a gray area. I mean, Quite frankly, in the U.S., I'll give you a little heads up in the U.S., there's state by state by state that pops up here in the U.S. that says, oh, it's illegal here. Oh, it's illegal here. We're going to arrest people in their homes. We're going to do this. It's kind of silly. It's really a gray area. Depending on who you talk to with the interpretation of law, U.S. or Canada, you get a different answer. What we have found out is that there are certain locales where if you're running a retail operation with CBD on the shelves in a certain state in the US, you may run into some conflict and some friction. We're not doing that. We're direct selling online to the consumer from, a, through, from and through a total legal standpoint. So in the same way that Canada has these why can't somebody just answer my question and make it clear? It's kind of like the Wild West. That's really the best analogy I can give you. In the Wild West, there was no clear cut. It was like whoever had the fastest gun or whoever the sheriff was that day before somebody else took over. And it's a little crazy. And the people that were making money and the, the – um, News piece I referred to earlier that I just saw was talking about the really only the people losing out by this becoming growing the way it is, this whole movement is big pharma, big pharma and or um, government and corporate run CBD sources. Um, those are the people that don't want the groundswell, the grassroots effort of really getting you the best product, the best natural product at the best price because it's all about money for them. So it's gonna be interesting. This is a bigger, this is bigger than just Canada, just so you know. Long-term, this is a big fight between 
people, the, the masses and corporate interests. And in this case, the corporate interests are specifically around what CBD is doing for corporate profits. It's going to be interesting. But in the shorter term, we will get this back into Canada. We will, we will follow whatever it takes to make it happen. Um, I have been told multiple times there are not producers of CBD products in Canada that can or even have the ability to create the volume or the quality of CBD products that you all are demanding. So it's going to have to be imported into Canada or imported for you, exported from us. So with that in mind, we're going to do whatever it takes to make that happen. I have heard of a lot of people that are contacting Health Canada, especially since that news um, piece was released, a couple of news pieces, and, and just kind of throwing their support behind, this has to change. This is life-changing. This was life-saving for my wife, husband, and mother, father, aunt, uncle, whatever. Um, this has to change. And one thing I do feel exists in Canada is a lot of people with heart. Even within the regimens of the government regulations, there's a lot of people with heart. So there may be a, a, you know, a response to a groundswell of people telling, whether it's Health Canada or whoever, I don't know all the regulatory agencies yet, that you know, this has to change. I believe it's gonna change. We've actually been told in March, this next month, that they, there's already slated a date in which Health Canada is going to be reviewing whatever it is that's in place currently. So the fact that we have an established license holder with a long-term record with Health Canada accessing them through us, and quite frankly, because of all of you, pretty much anybody that deals with the regulations around CBD knows of CTFO. We've kind of we've made both news pieces <laughs> that I've seen, and they all know of us. And yeah, as they hear from more people that this is really what needs to happen for Canada, our hope is when they review things in March, they may actually do what we've also heard. And the other thing we've heard is there's a very strong chance, not promising, do not hold me to this, but there's a very strong chance that in March or sometime soon thereafter, they may downgrade or deregulate CBD to be what's the equivalent of an over-the-counter, something you can buy over-the-counter, like in a pharmacy when you can do something without a prescription. If that's the case, problem solved, everything's coming back across the border. And we've been told to look to see if that happens next month. Again, not a promise. So, um, I'm not sure what else I can share. I kind of combined all the different points Janet asked me to touch on into sort of a rambling um, scenario here. I, I hope that I've addressed most of those things. Janet, I know that uh, between you and Klaus, you were thinking maybe you wanted to have some questions. So um, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you and see if I, hopefully I'll be able to answer some of them. Ma yeah. Michael, we have a couple of questions from Canadian Associates. Uh, one of them yes. asked if it would be possible because the waiting and halt time to call customer service is uh, very long, would it be possible to uh, have an 800 number made available for the Canadians? Unfortunately not, and I'll explain why. Um, and it's a very valid question. I'm not arguing the question, but let me explain a couple of things. First, the hold times are horrendous, and I apologize. We've had a perfect storm of things hit. Uh, the transition to the new websites and backbone, the Canadian uh, scenario, uh, a number of different situations. We, we were actually overstaffed with customer support before any of this hit. Just, you know, we had people sort of whenever they wanted time off, we would give it to them because they were sitting around waiting for something to happen. We had one and we had immediate call throughs. We had one and two and three minute call times with people calling in. We had emails all being answered the same day. And suddenly this hit 
and now we have we understand I want to apologize we understand but let me just explain again put on your business owner's hat not your employee hat that just wants you know why how can you have a company and not answer my question when I get into you so I'm going to explain how that is we suddenly have thousand fold more calls and thousand fold more emails and in hiring new people it takes a minimum of two weeks the the answers that you want you don't want somebody answering your phone and your call or your email and just saying sorry don't know sorry don't know we could hire a hundred people tomorrow they wouldn't know what they're doing so in the time it takes to train them the person training them has to come off of doing what they're doing or has to at least even if that person's learning has to way slow down what they're doing so quite frankly we're sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place between because we know this is temporary remember we had more than enough customer support and now we have way less so we hire train get all these people get everybody done and now we have all these people that are out of a job that we hired them to because we can't keep that many more people than they were already needed so we're really working diligently to solve the problems to get through the scenarios that a majority of all the calls and emails are about so that they're reduced so that we're back to where we were having said that we're also a very different network marketing company to answer your question specifically klaus or the associates question we're a company that runs lean and it's not really so much mean but the term is lean and mean and that means we don't run on a big fat profit margin if you look at the cost per product that we're offering and the commission per product that we're paying out we're very different than any other company out there which means we're not keeping this big fat profit for corporate and here's the thing if we put in an 800 number then there are tens of thousands of you calling in from Canada on an international 800 number that we're paying for. Now, I understand if you're calling and you don't have a free international call, you're paying for it, but there's one of you paying for it. If we're doing that, we either have to cut the commissions or we have to raise the prices for everybody. And we're just, we're just explaining that to you. So it's not that we haven't considered having the 800 number, for any because we can't just have it for one country it's got to be for everyone the problem is you'd still have the hold times because we're still dealing with the same staffing situation and we are we're bringing on new people but it's taking time and they're they're being trained by people that's slowing down the process so i'm trying to explain the the mechanics of what's going on so you more fully understand it's really easy to just say I even heard one person who was quite a problematic person say, how can a company your size not do this, 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 and this? Well, quite frankly, we've grown to this size quickly because of all of you, and we've done it in a very smart way to be able to keep the prices low and the commissions high. And when we had an explosion of customer support demand, it's taken us a while to catch up. Uh, but Mark, if we, we have, go ahead, Klaus. No, no, I, I wanted to go on because we have a couple of more uh, questions. And one okay, of go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, about uh, what if that next month, that over the counter idea, uh, not comes through? How long do you think, like they say, a heart of heart, how long do you think it would take uh, to ship CBD products back to Canada? I mean, just a ballpark number. I, okay, but I have no ballpark answer. Here's okay. the thing. Right. I have to relay to, I'm waiting. We have just established, remember, we're talking 24 to 48 hours from establishing the connection. I am waiting to hear back from the license holders' interactions with Health Canada what the requirements are. If the requirements are, I mean, it could, if the requirements are, Put your license number on the invoices and, we'll, and we're good to go we could be we could be shipping next week i don't expect that but if you know it could be as easy as that if the requirements are 
certifications of manufacturing facilities are uh, label changes, which takes weeks, um, are um, uh, all, all shipments going to one single location and fulfilled from there, which takes a long time to set up. It could be weeks. So um, it's, it's weeks, potentially months. That's the, it's not days. So that's the best really I could give you. Okay. Uh, somebody asked, uh, is it possible to put the Canadian pricing on the website? I'm sorry. The, no, Canadian pricing changes daily. There's no way to do that. How would I do that? I mean, um, again, think with your business cap on for a minute, not your employee cap. The, 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 rate, the exchange rate changes daily. There's, we don't have someone sitting there with nothing to do except wait to change the typing on the text, which takes HTML code to change every single place that every single of the 80 products are located to set up the Canadian pricing of what it would be every day. So again, I, I appreciate where you're coming from, but I'm asking that person that asked that, it's not an automatic scenario. It, it just, it's, it would be nice, but as we expand, again, we've been told this, we're, we're already in the UK, we're in Ireland and, and across the pond, so to speak, and hope to be in a lot more European countries very soon. Everything's gotta end, start off and end up in paying in US dollars, and the exchange rates are gonna kinda be falling where they may. Um, if we get to a place where we end up with it would almost be offshoot companies. I mean, I don't think it would even just be fulfillment centers in those locations. We might get to a place where there would be separate websites. We could take the time to set up programming. So that's something in the future. Let me put it this way. Once we get the products coming back to you, Canada, you build up a big enough uh, customer base there Let's see if we can't hire the programming to set up a separate website as a sub website of ours for a Canadian website that would say, this is what all the dollars equate to both in commissions and in sales prices in Canadian dollars. And potentially, I don't know this, I don't know if it exists, potentially that could be automated so that there's something that accesses the exchange rate that then changes those figures. What I've been told is it's a manual entry every time because they change so much. So that's my answer. Oh, I, I understand it, but thank you for answering it to, to the Canadian associates. I might sure. let me see here. Oh, one. Yeah, um, another, another question? Well, what, one of them, I just like uh, overall that you can say a few words to that because many always say that and you may have uh, uh, touched on it at the beginning. And uh, one associate says, many are frustrated about losing their teams and starting again for, you know, second or third time, building their teams back up again. And they, you know, it's hard uh, to, to, uh, for, for many Canadians. So maybe you want to, at the end of our call, say a few words to that. I feel for you. I understand. I have had to rebuild teams many times myself, and that was in the U.S. through a number of different scenarios. It was never our intention to have this happen. My biggest suggestion with that is um, understand that we will get there and that those same people that dropped off because things weren't smooth sailing, when they're smooth sailing again, there's a good chance you'll get them back. Don't try, don't reach out, don't go for them until we get it all smooth sailing so that the products are shipping directly and quickly to you and the online experience is simple and, and straightforward. But then a lot of those people, what they saw the first time, they'll see again. Um, in the meantime, I don't have an easy answer. It's kind of like when you're, and I actually had to do this recently, share a little bit without too much detail, when you're dealing with your kids. 
and they go through a rough time in life. And kids are your kids, no matter how old they get. Um, you just tell them sometimes, yeah, it, nobody said life's fair, but you got to deal with it the best you can and choose how you want to move forward. The only thing I want to let you know is, and this is the, the biggest thing I really want to keep sharing with you, is it's easy to blame your employer when you're an employee, but you're not an employee. You don't get a W-2. You get a 1099 if you're in this country and you get nothing in Canada as far as I know. You're a business owner. It's easy to identify for you that these challenges that you're experiencing are out of your control because they are. But I'm just sharing with you that they were out of our control as well. The good news is think if, if you had to on your own deal with solving all the issues that it would take to get your income and your team and your volume and everything and your ranks and everything back up where you want them. If you had to solve all the problems, you don't. You just have to have a certain amount of understanding and patience to know that nobody's got your back like we do in this industry and we will get it taken care of. So Klaus, I, th I think that's what I have to say to that. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Michael. And I think uh, we have uh, all, if not most of the question done. I would like to uh, have uh, Jeanette uh, close the call or maybe she has uh, one or two other questions. No, that, okay. that's it. And, and uh, thank you very much, Michael. And like you mentioned, companies often face tough issues like these, but it's clear that you're aware and involved and working strategically to get us back on track in Canada. So I know we're all eager to resume the momentum that uh, we were building there. So as soon as possible, um, we appreciate all of your ongoing support. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we conclude this webinar? No, I want to acknowledge um, Barb Troutman, um, Tracy that joined this the particular webinar, Simone Turner, Charity McKenzie. I mean, you guys in Canada, you have some, and, and I'm sorry, this is off the cuff, so I don't know if I'm forgetting a lot of other leaders there, but you have some amazing, dedicated, passionate leaders in Canada. And Janet, as well as Simone and Charity are on the, and Klaus are on the leadership council that really work closely and will continue and, and even more closely work with us here at corporate. You got people that not only have your back, and, and I, I want to, that's an overused term, have your back. Janet didn't have to do this. Klaus didn't have to do this. They have your back for your sake. They care about you as do we and that's what we really that's why we chose them it's why we're, where we're at as a leadership group because it's about people who care about the others and we had one gal who just was more the employee mentality that kept just saying i'm the little person i'm the little person i'm nobody cares about me and no matter how much we were telling her it's the whole reason we exist is for somebody who isn't an expert salesperson, marketer, or whatever, to be able to succeed here, she couldn't hear that. So I want you to know if you're, if you're hearing this or whether it's live or recorded or whatever, you got people that care about you even if they don't know you, literally. And it's not for their sake, it's for your sake. And that's the big difference. And, and so what I want to end with, you asked me if I had anything else, is personally thanking Janet and Klaus on this webinar and all of you that are taking leadership positions and, and roles and activities. And also all of you that either are or will now be choosing to have the business owner mentality as opposed to the employee mentality, because none of this is about entitlement. And unfortunately, in the past, this industry, network marketing, has marketed itself to and attracted quite a lot of people who are looking for get rich quick easy scheme 
kind of things. And any of the leaders you deal with will tell you, this is hard work. And sometimes they say, give me a paying job or I can go to sleep at night and turn it off. They'd be happy with it. But they also know you trade the limited responsibility for the unlimited potential in helping others and your own self and your family and the people you can do good for because that's where your heart is. So Janet and Klaus, I just want to end by thanking you on this webinar and also everyone that's out there in Canada. We'll get it back to you. We really will. Don't hold your breath because it won't be days <laughs> and I don't want anybody to turn blue and you know not be able to breathe, but we'll get it to you, I promise. Janet, back to you. We have confidence in you, Michael. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes tonight's meeting and we hope you'll join us for our next webinar and uh, that will be announced soon. So thank you to all of you. Good night and God bless. Thank you, Michael. Bye-bye. Thank you, Janet. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.